there, my name is Joel and today I'm going to be showing you how to install an oil pressure sender switch combo onto a Volvo Red Block engine. So I've got the oil pressure switch here and basically what we're going to be doing is installing this in the factory location onto the engine block. So this is a VDO part, I got this on Amazon, I've got the part number right there. Uh, basically what this does is uh, the part that is on the car uh, originally basically is a switch and when the oil pressure drops below a certain amount of PSI it sends the current to the actual gauge cluster and illuminates the low oil pressure light so what this does is it replaces that using um, basically the threads in the block um, and we'll talk about the adapter that's over here in just a minute and you have two different poles right here um, they're a little bit hard to see but there's a WK on the right and then a G on the left. So G is gonna be your sender, which is for the gauge that I'm installing in the car. And then the WK on the right, that is for the factory switch. So as I mentioned, the reason I'm doing this is because I already installed a gauge in my car. It's hooked up to power and ground and it is not yet actually hooked up to an oil pressure sender. So my goal is to have both the light illuminated on the dash from the factory as well as the gauge that I installed getting that functional. So um, basically these two terminals right here, these are just thumb screws and those basically unscrew and then you get a, uh, a ring terminal uh, over each post and then you thumb screw tighten these down. Now uh, this actual component is a uh, 1 8 NPT fitting. So this will not fit the threads in the block. The threads in the block are M14 by 1.5. So enter this spacer from STS Machining. Now you might be asking yourself, why not just buy a, an actual sender that has the threads that match the block? Well, those do exist, but unfortunately there isn't clearance for it to actually work. Uh, those will come in contact with the block. And so this spacer actually serves a purpose other than just being a, uh, a thread reducer. Uh, but the threads on the male end here are M14 by 1.5. I got this from STS Machining. It's designed for this exact purpose. And then the threads on the female end are 1 8 NPT. So this uh, is gonna go in like that, right? So that's how it's gonna go into the engine. I'm gonna show you how I ran the electrical wire. I'll show you a picture as well of the back of the gauge to show you how I have that all wired up. And um, a couple points I wanna make, this should come with a uh, brass washer, uh, excuse me, copper washer, and this one did. This looks very similar to the factory one that's used and you need that to help complete your seal. And you do not wanna use any Teflon tape on this because the engine block is how the electrical ground works on an install like this. So if you're doing something like this, don't use Teflon tape, um, just basically install it like this and I will show you the rest of the process from here. Okay, and here is my setup. Uh, I've got all three of the gauges that I selected installed. I've got the voltmeter working and the uh, turbo boost gauge is working. I installed the oil pressure gauge, but it didn't uh, basically get fully installed at the time that I put it in place. So the gauge does have power and it is connected to ground. Uh, I did take a picture of the back of that actual gauge so you can see what the connections look like. What I did ahead of time was I ran a long yellow wire for the connection to the oil pressure sensor and I tucked that up behind the dash knowing I was gonna use that later. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find that wire and we are gonna run that through the same hole in the engine bay where the vacuum line goes for the turbo boost pressure. And then we're gonna run that through the engine bay and bring that over to where our sensor comes out of the block. And I'll show you what that looks like now. So we are, of course, on the passenger side of the engine bay and we're looking through the turbocharger. I just wanna show you where that sensor is located. It's a little hard to see, but it's out of focus and it's basically the sensor that's in dead center on the image. Now you can't really get to that very easily unless you go ahead and remove some of the stuff in the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove both of the hoses connecting to the turbocharger and then we're gonna be able to get pretty easy access in there. 
And once we go in there, that's where we're gonna go ahead and hook up our wiring. So again, you can see that sensor in the back. Let me see if I can get it to focus for you. There it is. It's hiding. It's not as hard to get to as it looks, I promise. Here is the factory oil pressure sensor that I just removed from the block. I used this 24 millimeter deep well and a breaker bar. You basically need that type of socket in order to get over the top of the oil pressure sensor there. If you have a shallow well socket, it will not work. Uh, there is no room to swing a wrench in there. So if you're gonna do this job, I would definitely make sure you have a 24 millimeter deep well socket before you start. I will do my best to try and show you exactly how I ran the electrical wiring. This basically started going through the little rubber stopper right where the vacuum line is for the turbo boost. And you can see the yellow wire, super low key, uh, very easy to spot. It follows through the engine bay and then you can see I had it come over here and follow the wiring harness down there basically following the existing wiring harness you can see it and then it kind of disappears between the block and the alternator so the way this works you can't really see it very well i will try to show you from here uh, the factory wiring harness as well as the one that i i ran the fact the new wire basically goes underneath the i think underneath or right above the crank snout i can't remember which and uh, I ran the yellow wire that I added through a length of rubber vacuum hose just to kind of protect it from all the heat there. So there are my two connections. And I'll see if I can get this down there for you. You can see that, that is, above that is the actual port for the oil pressure sensor. So down below the one that's in the black sheath, that is gonna be the new one that I added. And the one where you can see pink and blue on the terminals, that is the factory wire. So I went ahead and put the ring terminals on both to make these nice and snug. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get this on there. I do wanna also mention, I picked up a set of stubby wrenches to try to make this job a little bit easier because there's not really enough room to swing a full size wrench in there. Uh, basically, I'm gonna be using a socket on the spacer first because I can get in there more easily when it goes in by itself with the copper washer. And then I'm gonna hand tighten the oil pressure sensor. And then I'm gonna be using the stubby 17 millimeter wrench right here to try to get that, to make that happen. I think that's a 17, is that right? Maybe not. Yeah, that's a 17, we're good. Uh, let's go ahead and get it installed and see how it goes. And there she is all installed, snugged up all nice and good. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna reinstall these turbo and intercooler hoses and let's see if our oil pressure gauge works. All right, there you go. Oil pressure gauge is working. So I am really pleased there are no leaks. You definitely wanna go ahead and check for leaks after you get your engine running. Uh, if you don't make a perfect seal, you will see oil running down the side of the block. But once you get it all sorted, you now can see everything that's happening with your engine. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.